play the video of the police brutally attacking an Alzheimer's patient. And I see these reports every few days where an autistic person or retarded person is beaten or killed by police. They've had it a couple times in Austin where mentally retarded men are out. The police pull up and say, come here. And they go, you know, I mean, I've actually seen on the news some of the footage. And they'll go, uh, uh and then start walking away. And the cop just draws down and shoots them right in the back. And then remember, Chicago police two weeks ago said, yeah, if you run from us, we're going to shoot you in the back. That was CBS News. And they said, yeah, that's our policy. I mean, there's, it isn't all about you being an authority. The only person you should be shooting in the back is if somebody's got a hostage or if somebody's got a weapon or if somebody's been, I think if somebody starts driving recklessly, ramming into other cars and these car chases, I think the police ought to open up on them because that's a deadly weapon. But you get some retarded guy going, no, starts running from the cops and they just get down on one knee and it's like, Ugh. you know, I mean, it's just, it's, oh, I mean, that is crazy. That is cold blooded killing. Uh, it's just out of control. But, uh, I mean, just the wanting to use force. And I can see wanting to use some force on some big guy with tattoos all over him going, come on, cop, let's go. Then that's when you're supposed to get your warrior instinct up and, and, and want to fight somebody. You're not supposed to want to fight a retarded, you know, 20 year old. You're not supposed to want to fight an autistic person. You're not supposed to want to fight an 87 year old. Your instinct as a man or as a woman is to want to fight people that are actually a threat to you. I don't know how to explain. I don't understand it. I mean, I can't even get aggressive with somebody who isn't powerful. I mean, I'm not even wired that way. I mean, I don't understand this system. I, I don't understand these people because the cops I see tend to enjoy, like all these pro-lifers. I've got videos of them. If they're sitting out on the sidewalk, the cops legally in federal court torture them worse than Abu Ghraib. Or, or, or Camp X-Ray, they take nunchucks and twist their arms till they break with the bones sticking out. We've shown the video. YouTube bans that, by the way. Oh, you can show a beheading video because that's what they want to show. But you show. The, and again, how do they get whole police departments in L.A. and it's a couple other states uh, to break men and women's arms and laugh about it? And then the cops get excited after they're beating them and pull out their billy clubs after they see blood. <sighs> I don't know. You're a different type of animal. I mean, I, what makes me tick is different from what makes you tick. And I know there are a lot of police that have, you know, good instincts and, 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 and do actually want to go after bad guys. I just, I don't understand it. I mean, I've seen, I don't go to 6th Street anymore because 10, 11 years ago, I would go down there just to film Halloween videos, you know, of what people thought politically, asking them questions. And I'd see cops just beat people up for no reason and slam women's heads in the ground and and, and I started seeing shaved head cops with black gloves looking for a fight and going, you got a problem, punk? And I was just like, I got to get out of here. So, And I, I, I really went down there to begin with. But the only time I go to 6th Street now is when I get invited by a TV station or radio station. PBS, of all people, wanted me on locally for Austin TV about South by Southwest this year. Some radio stations wanted me down there. And I went down there. But I, uh, you know, I keep my eyes down and just keep going because the cops are looking for trouble. I mean, I was actually looking around for a bar. I was supposed to go in for an interview and a nice cop walks over and goes, you looking for something? Yeah, it's, it's right over there. Just about, about six, six down that way. Well, I said, thank you officer. He went, Oh, you bet. Have a great day. That was a person who wants honor on the badge. That's a person who wants to build up his position as a peace officer and work with the community, not the guys that are just like bouncers who decided to become cops who got an attitude. I'll tell you another reason I don't go down to the bar district of Austin is there are some good restaurants down there is it was bouncers too. I remember in college taking dates down there and you'd be walking through and just showing your ID and, the, and a big guy would go feeling tough tonight, huh, punk? How about you make a move? And I'd see him do it to me and to other people and I wouldn't even get mad. I would like, is this a joke? You know, but these are guys on steroids who can't get women, or even if they can, they can't perform, and and they've got attitudes, and 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 they're in a position where legally they can beat you up and get away with it, so they're looking for a fight. 
Meanwhile, the bankers are ripping him off. The, the system's scamming him. All the nerds. See, this is the nerds rule. The globalists are nerds into science and facts and studying how humans operate and how to manipulate us. And they're all, oh, you're a big bouncer. Oh, I control whole mercenary armies. See, that's their attitude to you, the big bouncer, and you work for them. You're just the thug they use. They laugh at you. I mean, these guys, like the White House science czar, I, I know their mindset. I've read their writings. When they see the thugs that protect them, they think, hello, good morning. Oh, you, you're drinking your fluoride and taking your shots and her brain damage. And, 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 and they look at you like they're examining you. And it's a little, it's a dominant power trip. See, the bouncer likes to act tough at the bar. Not all bouncers, but I'm saying, you know, these thug ones. Just like a thug cop wants to act that way. Not all cops, but the bad ones. People always do straw man attacks and say, I hate all unions. I hate all cops. I hate all bouncers. No, I, I don't hate all jail guards. I'm talking about the sadomasochistic ones that are into being thugs and pressing on the nerve of raw power. And... The point I wanted to make is the scientific dictators, they're into acting very homely and very weak and, you know, very Emperor Palpatine. Oh, I just want to help. Oh. And that's what they're doing. And, 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 and they just enjoy, though. I look, they love going into crowds of people and seeing everyone they're drugging, everyone they're diseasing, everyone they're implanting with cancer viruses, everyone they're sterilizing. It's just a quiet sort of enjoyment. And they even write about this, about the satisfaction helping the earth. Hmm. So all you tough guys need to get tough. And actually, instead of acting tough at bars, you know, and tough at the club or tough at work, why don't you get tough for your family and humanity and become real men? Why don't you cops that like beating people up become real men? See, because the system you love that's given you this petty power is, 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 is punking you. And this show is about not being punked. Do you understand? It's about really being a human being, really being straight and strong. Does that mean we have all the answers? No. But we got guts and guts is enough, and we're taking action. And we're committed. It doesn't, we're following this road wherever it goes. You understand? The road goes straight into the New World Order. Boom! We're not stopping. We're committed. We're accelerating. We're giving it the gas. Full throttle. Yeah. You understand that? It's a good feeling. And a lot of you got one chance to really live and one chance to do what's right. You're meant to be a warrior for liberty. You're meant to stand up for strength. You're meant to be educated and informed. They also train guys that being informed and being knowledgeable is wimpy. Well, you don't know about history and real warriors, do you? You are in a sick, arrested development culture. Get out of it. All right, I said I'm taking calls, and I promise. The start of the next hour, not even the eight after, I'm going into the master plan, new world order, the revolution. Which way is it going to go? The crossroads, all of this. But I got some clips I want to play and some calls. So let's take a few calls right now. Matthew in North Carolina, go ahead. Hey, Alex, how you doing, bud? Good. What's on your mind today? Nothing, man. I just wanted to tell you about, uh, I ran into a Freemason and he told me to read some books. And he said, like, to, to become a Freemason, not that I wanted to become a Freemason or anything. He said, read, uh, William Cooper's To Behold a Pale Horse. I think it was Defrauding America by, uh, Ralph Emerson. And, uh, I just wanted to let you know, you know, Ralph, uh, Rush Limbaugh, he told, uh, America that William Cooper was dangerous. And he was, uh, one of the dangerous Radio host, I just want you to be careful, man. Love you. All right, buddy. Thank you. Look, I'm not in the business of getting in fights with William Cooper. But people tried to set him up against me because he did some jealousy broadcasts. And most people that attack me aren't government agents. They're mad. And he started saying that I was more popular than him. I never heard his radio show. Never heard it. And you can go back to my early TV shows. You know, I was citing G. Edward Griffin, Ron Paul. Those were the people. If you see those first shows, I was pretty close to a mainline Republican. Kind of like Republicans today that are starting to get into Ron Paul. That was about the level I was at. I mean, I knew about the Federal Reserve. I knew about global banks. I knew about monopoly capitalism. I knew socialism and fascism were controlled by the banks. I'd read uh, Gary Allen's. You know who woke me up? It's Gary Allen. Uh, it's Bob Chapman. 
Bob Chapman, you know, published that book. He, he paid for it. That's who woke me up. And so I wasn't into UFOs. I've never covered UFOs. That's not me. He was a UFOologist. That's what he did. And he was on WBCQ that no one can hear in Texas. And by the time after I'd interviewed him, trying to help him out when I heard the IRS was after him, the age of the Internet had begun, people said, hey, you better know who this guy is. Here are audio recordings of him attacking you. So I was sent cassette tapes that were recorded off shortwave that I could barely understand. So I didn't, I didn't really listen to much of it. I popped one in, and he said that I'm a transvestite that wears uh, uh, ruby nipple rings. And I thought it was a joke. And then I finally read the, the Behold a Pale Horse I've been mailed. I've been mailed a lot of them. And it was uh, it, it said that J Jesus was sacrificed by aliens and there were holograms and flying saucer submarines. And I mean, I couldn't get through it. 